Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome back to Shelf Stories, the channel that tells tales from games, books, and life. And also, welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop podcast. I am your host, Jason. Thank you so much for stopping by for part two of our Industry Nuts and Bolts, our look at... Uh, you know, the under the hood and how this all works and everything. Uh, last week, we had uh, our esteemed guest talking about prices and shipping, the things that have happened on the table. This time, we're going to let it rip, baby. Uh, the, the direct to consumer, for better or worse, <laughs> taking the middleman out and interacting with folks uh, that is enabled by crowdfunding, Kickstarter in particular, but is other uh, platforms too. I think we're going to focus on Kickstarter. Uh, and, you know, we're just going to, Go for it. And this, and the Kickstarter platform in particular has some things going on. We could kind of co- go over this too. But let me reintroduce my guest. Uh, first of all, ladies first. Uh, she is the consumer representative uh, front-facing for Pandasaurus Games, uh, responsible for excellent games such as uh, Dino World and The Loop and uh, the uh, skating game, Tony Hawk, the boarding game, I'm going to always call it, uh, and plenty of other of your favorites. She is Danny Lowe. Welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me, Jason. Happy to be here. And James Hudson. <laughs> hey. I, you you've been on my a, show so many times. <laughs> and you just needed a local redneck to come and say <laughs> outlandishly stupid things. So here I am. Oh, we are going to get into outlandishly stupid things. Responses to outlandishly stupid things. I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, I mean, it is difficult. There, There is... Uh, so, I mean, kind of like viewer beware. I think that we are really going to kind of get into the weeds of what's going on with Kickstarter. Not safe for work. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> we try to keep it family friendly in the one-stop call shop. So we're going to we'll do the best that we can here. Uh, but yeah, we, we, I, want, I really wanted to get into, and this will not be the only conversation I have about Kickstarter uh, because there's plenty of creators and everybody has their different opinions and shelf stories I want to hear you know, what people are, I want to hear from the backers and I want to hear from different publishers and I want to hear from, you know, heaven willing, you know, people actually Kickstarter, come on down, Uh, people, reps, uh, because it's, you know, it debuted, what was it, 10 years ago, I think was the first project, 11, 12 years ago. It's it's been a while now. And, you know, I think that when it first came in, we didn't understand the sea change that would happen. Now, you know, like, I mean, I, I still remember even, like five years ago, we were saying, okay, there's games and there's Kickstarter games. Like they're two <laughs> different things. And now this is no difference, you know, or like, you know, there's like difference with the minis, you know, like the big campaigns are different, but like, you know, you'll get, you know, just like a game, <laughs> like Flame Crash or something like that. Some, you know, regular game that's they were Kickstarter. So it's like, it's, it's a real part of the industry. It's worth knowing about it. It's worth knowing. Uh, okay. So, I mean, it's such a big topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's start with, Let's just start with that difference. Uh, talk a little bit about Kickstarter versus the other outlets. You know, uh, in terms of it was just to get us just to get the wet the whistle, right? Uh, your experience on you know selling on Kickstarter um, versus because I think Danny had talked about like the streams, right? You know, like the the, the distributors and all that kind of stuff. Let's just set the scene. So I'll go to Danny first. Um, talk about that first so that we can set the scene. So. Previously, we mentioned how publishers sell to distributors, to game stores, and to fans directly. Kickstarter is, an, is another, I guess, a, a trickle of the fan stream, right? It's fans and sometimes retailer backers who are supporting the campaign. Um, what they're purchasing with their pledge is what we consider full MSRP, right? It's the... Mm. $50 pledge, $70 pledge. The retailers pay half that usually, and then they sell $50, $70 to their, to their um, consumers. Uh, why we use Kickstarter is because Kickstarter pays us upfront, right? Mm-hmm. So Dino World, for example, the campaign ended October, 2020. We shipped the game in September, 2021. But we, we got those funds that we raised in October. So that allowed us to fund the production of the games to pay for shipping uh, and support the future games that we made. And that mm-hmm. was really, really nice, uh, especially in the pandemic. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that upfront money, like, is that the, I, that's what I've heard, two things that are the benefit of Kickstarter, the upfront money and the direct access to consumers, direct feedback. You know, you get those super backers, right? And I think we've talked about that, James, when we talked about the last project, that that direct um, feedback you get, 
about mm-hmm. games and improving the rule books. And, you know, they'll rule the rule books better than us sometimes. <laughs> one of, one of, the, one the, games, of the, yeah. the absolute biggest advantages to crowdfunding is we get to find out how much interest there really is for a project, right? Sure. Because um, we put on our rose colored glasses when we're, our projects are so close to our hearts. We think they're all smash hits, right? Uh, that's why we signed them. That's why we developed them. We've poured our heart, soul, blood, sweat, and tears into this thing. And so when we go, we're like, this game's amazing. And then, you know, 800 people back it. So you've moved 1,100 units. Well, what if you would have printed 10,000 of those and went in a traditional retail and there was only a thousand people that were really interested in the game you'd be sitting on nine thousand units in your warehouse and that entire project would be in the hole which then sets you behind for all your future projects because now you've ate up all of your cash flow into a bad thing so crowdfunding one of its biggest biggest advantages is we get to gauge how much interest there is in a project before we produce it Mm -hmm. I, i see this on threads all over the social media about how oh, you took our interest-free loan. That <laughs> money is spent very quickly after mm-hmm. because production starts relatively soon after the end of the campaign. Molds have to be paid for. Things have to be placed. Deposits have to be put down on the production run. But us knowing from the get-go how many units we need and then we have a much better piece of data to say hmm, okay we sold ten thousand kickstarter units now we can predict we think in retail on the retail release it should do about this many and you have so much more data right i'll always go back to wingspan jamie has huge smash hit he calls all the distros he's like what do you think it's a game about birds and they're like game about <laughs> birds i don't know you might sell some so his first print run was only ten thousand units and it sold out instantly and then we all know of the the, yeah. the fever the fervor that it was to get a wingspan for about a year mm-hmm. i mean it so, just it just passed a million copies sold yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. huge so so that's 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 one huge thing i mean it just It gives companies such financial stability to know precisely what you need to order, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have any overages. You don't have any waste. The other thing, and this is where I could rant for a while on this one. Like I could probably do a whole TED talk. Uh, So I'm going to. I'll try to contain the rage if I feel like. (laughs) It's not rage. It's not rage. It's not rage. It's more of a like need people to understand, right? Mm -hmm. When you look at Simon, Marvel Zombicide. Oh, 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 boy. How can such a huge company still be using crowdfunding for $9 million? That's a great impression. (laughs) The the views of shelf stories are not (laughs) reflecting the views of my guests. (laughs) That that game in its current iteration Mm -hmm. would not exist if it didn't go to crowdfunding. The reason they're able to put the stuff in it that they know, and then people are like, well, that stuff's just baked in there. All these stretch goals. Of course they're baked in there because they know they're going to have a certain amount of success through the upfront money. They'll be able to pick that number that I just talked about because they're not going to have any sort of overages. They're not going to have a warehouse full of games. They're not going to pull a godfather. Like they did with Godfather. Yeah. Right. We all know what they did with Godfather. They way overestimated what, how popular they mm-hmm. thought that game was going to be, even though that game's amazing, by the way. It's one of my favorite Eric Lang games. And, uh, but you, we, I saw a copy of that thing in freaking TJ Maxx for $7.99. So all that to say, mm-hmm. games that are on Kickstarter versus if you had to plan for that game to go straight to retail they would look vastly different. The amount of content you're able to put into the game because you know you're going to get that better margin, because you know you're going to be able to uh, get that print run dialed in perfectly, you're able to take more risk on putting more things in the box. So Mm -hmm. if you like stuff, and not just just miniatures, I'm not talking about, uh, and this is coming from the highly produced guy, highly produced productions, but just game content like that cog goes up we're able to subsidize that we're able to mitigate that risk through crowdfunding without Mm -hmm. it you get a very basic game that goes straight to retail Mm -hmm. i want to i want to jump off that please um 
specifically with all of the come on games, right? The boxes are huge Mm -hmm. and they have 20 different expansions and very few retailers can afford to dedicate that much shelf space or floor space to a single title because the audience is very particular. And (laughs) if with all those expansions, they can fit one copy of the game in all of its glory, when they could diversify, get multiple copies of Amachi Koro or whatever, Ticket to Ride, um, and reach more people. So without crowdfunding and reaching their wide audience from the get-go, it it wouldn't survive in retail. Mm But you so, wouldn't get you mm-hmm. wouldn't get so if you if there's three or four of those boxes from that zombicide that you're like, oh my, I gotta have the X-Men, I gotta have the Fantastic Four, and you wouldn't you literally wouldn't get it if mm-hmm. it went straight to retail. People are like they should just go straight to retail with this. But like Danny said, retailers wouldn't put 14 boxes of marble zombicide on their shelves. They've mm-hmm. got to have other games. So you just wouldn't get it. Okay, so I, I'll um, push back a little bit from the consumer perspective. So then we Ooh. talked about the benefits of Kickstarter. Oh, <laughs> you know my channel. You know, <laughs> you know I like to have multiple perspectives. I have, I'm like, mul- I contain multitude, James. I, I can't talk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so then, um, actually, hold on a sec. See, look what you did, James. You made me forget my channel. Good, I messed you up. <laughs> You're off your game. Okay. So we talked about, okay, so this is why uh, Kickstarter is good for the publisher. Right, the mm-hmm. upfront money and the the instant audience uh, and your gauge of how how good a game is going to be, all that stuff is good. Um, so, from a consumer end, one of the things that has happened is that you know, as a Marvel Zombie side, you're right, both of you are right. That would not exist to retail, but that's like a good thing, right? So, like what Kickstarter has um, developed, one of the things is the quote unquote all in, and the all in just didn't exist. And you know, it's like okay, I got a I got a game. And I, uh, this is a, it's a game, uh, and you know, a maybe I like it and I want more of it, or this game could be good with like something else. So like the the, the publisher would be like, okay, like it's a feedback, make an expansion, boom, done. You know, like Kingsburg, you know, rough game at the beginning to forge a realm expansion. Wow, fixed it. This game is awesome now. Uh, we don't get that anymore. So one of the things that Kickstarter has done is like, okay, with the all-in package, now you get the seven boxes and people take their pictures with the seven boxes. And that's not, that hasn't had a really a good effect because it's that FOMO effect, mm-hmm. right? Now we're talking FOMO. Now it's like, I don't want that base pledge. I want, I got to have the all-in because what if I like it and I can't get the expansion because they never sell the expansions other outside of that Kickstarter. So the, 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 you know, direct sales, none of that stuff happens. So then that, when you yank on FOMO, and I have a feeling we're going to talk about FOMO a couple of times here, uh, in that way, it just creates kind of a, and like an unhappiness. Like we don't like, you know, we feel like we're being stuffed, right? And it's like, uh, I don't want to, and, and I think that's part of where the, the gamer upsetness is coming from. I feel like I'm being stuffed. And CMON is kind of at the, at the forefront of that because they've been doing it for years. And it's like, okay, could they have sold this game at retail? Okay, they could have sold the base game at retail. And what's wrong with that? And if it does well, then trickle out some other stuff. Why does it have to be all at once? So then that's that would be, I guess, uh, one of the counter arguments. That what do you think of that, uh, James? Uh, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, there's a thousand counter arguments, but you know, I think one one main one when when come on goes to somebody like Marvel and says, "Can we have this license?" Uh, Marvel says, what are you going to get us if we give you this license, right? So they have to find the best way to, uh, I'm going to use this word. This is a word that's used in business, okay? To exploit that license, Mm. right? And they have to exploit it the best they can. Now, I, 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 you can go look at my campaigns. We don't build our, nor does Danny and Pandasaurus. Our our campaigns don't look like Simon's. So like we don't, tug on the FOMO the same way, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say like in upcoming title blades, uh, for the first time that we've ever done it, we we will have four exclusive scenarios that you get if you're a Kickstarter backer. So some are going to say, well, you're just trying to tug on FOMO. Well, our intention isn't to tug on FOMO. Our intention is to give backers something special for mm-hmm. giving us their money a year in advance, right? So it's got to, you can't have it both ways, right? You can't say, um, 
I'm giving you an interest-free loan, but then we're like, well, we want to give you something special for that, that interest-free loan. I'm air quoting right now. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to yell at me because now I'm trying to tug on FOMO. Like I'm in this damned if I do, damned if I don't situation. It's and very true. <laughs> uh, even so there've been campaigns I've worked on where we have a lot of exclusives. You'll never get it outside the campaign. We really push you to back right now or forever hold your peace. People complain about that, right? For the reasons we're talking about. Conversely, in other campaigns where the Kickstarter pledge looks very similar to what we eventually sell at retail, we get complaints of, well, it's not special. Why did I pay up front? I could have just walked to my game store and picked it up. So you can't have it both ways. Mm -hmm. it, it, you have to walk a very fine line, as James said. And you've gotten both. Like, like that is a tangible thing where it's like, okay, do the exclusives complainers, do the not exclusives complainers. That that's a real thing that's happening. Yes. <laughs> Every <laughs> month. Because I mean, everyone's individual. So like everyone has their different perspective. So like, it's useful to hear your perspective where like you're hearing from a lot of us and we're on, we're on different sides, mm -hmm. you know, like, wanting different things. Everybody has different buy motives, right? It's yeah. just like when you write a rule book, everybody has different ways that they learn a rule book. I've had back-to-back -back comments on BGG where someone said, this is the best rule book layout I've ever had. The next comment says, your rule book sucks. It's the worst. And you're like, <laughs> you know, and it's, it's, it's similar, right? Like we, we, we do what we can. So like what we're doing with the tile blades too, is we're calling them Kickstarter promos. So you will get them for free if you back the Kickstarter, right? but they will be available on our web store. So they're never going to go into retail. They're never going to have a wide release. Mm. But if somebody does come along later, because I understand that I had the same thing happen to me back when I first got in the hobby. I didn't back blood rage played somebody else's copy. They had Fenrir. I was like, <laughs> I got to have Fenrir. You go to eBay, mm -hmm. it's $150 just for that one piece. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I understand where people are coming from, but at the end of the day, like we've got to find a way to try to, like Danny was saying, we got to got to split the middle, you know, or, or, you know, straddle the fence, whatever analogy you want to use there to give people on both sides the best we can. In my opinion, I think the, you get it for free during the Kickstarter, but I'm still going to sell it later at a, at a, at a price through our mm -hmm. web store. Let's everybody have their cake and eat it too. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. We did that with Dino World. We still get complaints on it. Um, there is no winning, <laughs> Um, but that, that was a really good, um, option. I'm going to use Dino Island as another example of this sure. phenomenon in the first camp. I mean, granted, I wasn't on the Panda team at this point, but the first Dino Island campaign was completely decked out. There was exclusives after exclusive after exclusive, but they always wanted to bring it into distro and reach that wide consumer audience. What ended up happening was the Kickstarter was so blinged out. That's all anyone ever wanted. Mm -hmm. And the retail was just so pale in comparison mm -hmm. that didn't do well. So then we had to go back and revise it and lower the price and add a little like this last year or 2020, we released a new version with three different meeple shapes of dinos to make it slightly more cool. And it's had more success. So you can't go too far in either direction with exclusives or Mm -hmm. or making it accessible. I've definitely done episodes of like, you know, how the deluxe, if the deluxe exists like it, with the regular version, then it's going to make the regular version look like garbage. And that, that's an unfortunate thing. And I mean, that's a whole like kind of other stuff uh, in terms of psychology. Uh, I wanted to, since we're there, it's right on the tip of our tongues, we're there. Kickstarter complainers and mm. the, the negativity. What I'm hearing, and I, I'm very curious to know, is that the negativity has gone up in recent times where the public, it's, it's harder times. We just went over that in the last episode, harder times for the, uh, for the pubs because of increased prices and like just difficulty of getting stuff. Uh, but it isn't being met. I mean, it's better with a little bit of like, you know, kind of grace from the consumers, but there's this other edge to it. So I guess I'll, I'll ask Danny first. Uh, do you feel like that there is an increase in negativity or an intensification of negativity in some ways? Is that a, 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 a misperception on my part? No, okay. no, absolutely not. <laughs> Straight up. I think that's very accurate. <laughs> um, 
and of course I'm not a psychologist. I can't identify where each person is coming from. We've all got stuff going on in our lives. Right. Um, however, I think the lack of moderation on Kickstarter makes it increasingly apparent for Dino world. Right? Talk a little I, bit about actually, I don't want to take that for granted. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about like what that means, like lack of moderation on Kickstarter. So on social media, in discord, in most on BGG, <laughs> they have moderators or you have admin tools. So you can hide comments, you can delete them, you can reply to them. You can even block people if it gets to that point to keep your community not censored, but to <laughs> reinforce the values that you want. So if someone's being rude, aggressive, harassing your staff or other people, you can chime in, explain their bad behavior, how to change it, give them that opportunity to improve. And if they don't, you escort them off of your premises, your digital <laughs> premises. Right. That's normal and it creates a healthy fan base. Your fans won't want to come to you if all they see is this like dumpster fire of negativity. Uh, and we, would, we don't want to be associated with that either. However, on Kickstarter, there's none of those options. You can report a comment, but you can't actually take action beyond that. It's not up to you to decide whether a comment is removed, whether a comment is hidden. Um, the only way someone's comments are removed is if they cancel their pledge and their money is refunded, which mm. hurts us as the creator. Um, and you can't do this until after the campaign. So if there's negativity going on during the campaign, there's very little you can do to stop it besides donning your protective gear, your armor and doing mm. your best. But, mm -hmm. you know, with trolls, they feed off of that and they, their, their weapons are very strong mm -hmm. <laughs> from my metaphor. And uh, I think just to piggyback on that, I, I saw a recent Twitter thread uh, talking about uh, Reddit and the analysis of like, who causes trouble. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we both saw the same thread about like, it really is a, a, a tippy top of people. Like, you know, we're talking about 1% of users generating 70% of the things that are coded as harassment. So like being able to just lop off that 1% would make a huge difference. And Kickstarter doesn't let you do that. And it hasn't let you do that like for a year. I think that I remember hearing people complain about that last year and nothing's changed. They, they refuse. It's, it's not a, at this point, it's, it's, it, I don't know. I, I'm trying not to be too negative toward them, but like, they just don't care. They mm -hmm. honestly don't care. And that's, that's what's frustrating for creators, you know, and that's what's driving a lot of people, a lot of creators, even before we get into the, some of the other things that Kickstarter is trying to do uh, to game found and some of the other platforms to go try. Mm -hmm. um, but that's also dangerous. Uh, or, well, it's risky for us mm -hmm. creators, right? Because we built a fan base on a platform over six, seven years then you can't, it doesn't go one-to-one. -one. You can't transfer that over. Uh, of course, what Awakened Realms does, but Awakened Realms owns the game found backend. So mm -hmm. it's less risky for them to do that. Mm -hmm. um, or like Chip Theory, because yeah, they don't, Chip you know. Theory has, you know, has such a huge fan base. They'll follow them right. into, into wherever, right? Because you can't get their games in retail. You, mm -hmm. you only get them where they come from. So, but to answer so to add to the, uh, before we dive off, into, there, I think there's two things that, that come to mind when we're talking about the negativity on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. One is the temperature of everything has risen over the last four to five years. Okay. We, you know, political discourse, uh, online social, everything, that temperature has risen. Um, I, I definitely am very opinionated on why I think that is, um, but that's not for this podcast. Um, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll say this neutral thing. I think with Kickstarter, re Kickstarter removed the friction between consumers and creators. Like there was a lot of like, you know, FLGS and, you know, distributors, you know, all this like middle people. So like when someone's like, oh, this game sucks and they're doing it in a table, it's like, okay, this game sucks and whatever. And now like, you know, now with Kickstarter, now with social media, now with these access, now it's like, if this game sucks, I have direct access to James Hudson who made that sucky game. And not only do I have access to him, like I can hold my dollar 
Right. So I so I mean I, in a neutral way I think we can say that that's a big contributing factor and that's directly relevant to the Kickstarter platform is that the friction's been removed between all these actors and now it's like if you know that that, that could be good like you hear from directly from fans this is a great game and everything but I like to say in psychology good stuff is slippery bad stuff is sticky yeah, mm. yeah. good stuff is like Teflon bad stuff's like Velcro yeah and for every great comment we get. The, the, you know, if we create 100 good comments, we get the one or the two, especially with that, like we talked about with Danny, the heat that the really trolly ones, those are going to stick really hard. So like, yeah, so in the last five years, we removed the friction, therefore negativity. So so we've got the temperature, temperature's up, right? The oven, we've cranked the temperature up. <laughs> uh, and then I always equate this to uh, Danny's uh, fanning herself on the podcast. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> uh, I always equate this analogy to, to a rising sea level, right? And, and this is mm-hmm. I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna use a word and it's gonna it's gonna create entitlement. And so entitlement, I don't necessarily point at consumers and say you're entitled, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's a bit of the system over the last five years. Um, if you go back and look at campaigns from say 2016, 2017, and what games were all and compare them to what games offer now, right? The level of production, the level of offering to, for everybody to get that consumer's attention, everyone has just continually one upped each other to the point right. that games right. now offer you know uh get to get your nails done and a free teeth cleaning and all these other things that you know all this crazy stuff that you have to try to like see people add on top you know i remember the, for me uh, the when i knew it got ridiculous and i love peter vaughn uh, and i love dwellings of elderville mm-hmm. but the sound bases right that make yeah. these noises when you move the monsters <laughs> around i mean there's unnecessary and then there's just frivolous and <laughs> uh even though I play with them, I turn them on every time and I still play with them and I love it when we play the game. All that to say is it's, it's that, that sea level, right? The rising sea level of entitlement has, when you, I think you throw in the, in the boiling pot that you've just got this perfect storm of just ugliness, right? Mm-hmm. It's so easy. Plus you remove humanity through the, t- through the computer screen, right? That too. Our humanity is, is removed. And so now it's just so easy to be like, jump to the worst conclusion about somebody that you think they're greedy or they're trying to take advantage. And you just got Danny over there behind her laptop, just literally trying to just get through that day's uh, daily update or, or, or whatever. Right. It's like, no one was thinking about how they're going to like screw you over Tim from Tennessee. Right. Like that's not (laughs) Tim. (laughs) Well, it's, it's like what we mentioned earlier the 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 bar that's set by the best experience someone's ever had Mm -hmm. becomes the new norm but i think the worst experience also sticks with them which is why i try to be as transparent as possible in my updates to say oh things are delayed because we only got one container or oh it's here but it's been stuck in la for two months sorry like our, sure designer, no, our designer got sick and it took him an extra month to get the files to us when mm-hmm. and because life happens to people on this side of, of the of the scenario. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or our warehouse got broken into and copies of the games were still. Mm. <laughs> like, I, I, pro- I prioritize transparency so people cannot make the worst assumption about us because we're not trying to steal. We don't want it to be delayed. We really would love for you to get the games that you ordered <laughs> so you can enjoy them and play them and tell mm-hmm. us how much you love them. Everything else, it is not our goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, 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 and I think that last point is, is something that I don't know that consumers really think a lot about, but it is only to our advantage to get you your game as quickly as possible. So that is our goal. It, the mm-hmm. faster we get you the game, the happier you are when you get the game probably means the next time we launch something, you're there with your credit card. And I mean, that's what we need to be successful. And so on our end, we're not thinking of ways to like go take your money and have umbrella drinks at the beach and just chill for a year. It's 
it's always, there's a ton of pressure on publishers and creators to get you those gains. They're only really thinking about that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Do, do different people have different um, work ethic and, and how that happens? Sure. Sure. But that's also just part of supporting people through a crowdfunding. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's this idea. I mean, so first of all, the the accusations of grift, like you're grifting me, like you know, you you're taking my money, or you know, you're charging me extra shipping, and you're charging me all this other stuff. And then there's like, okay, you know, do you know what you're doing? You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Well, no. And Jason, no, not every creator knows what they're doing, and and mm-hmm. I think that has got, also has gotten lost, right, with crowdfunding, especially. Okay, so. Simon, yes, they should be able to have a pretty a pretty strong timeline. They should know when roughly that's going to deliver. There are 60 employees there. But Amari, by himself, with a couple of freelancers, you can't hold him to the same expectation that you do Simon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give Amari a shout out. Uh, I'm going to talk to him a couple of days and be like, okay. <laughs> Let him know that there's a lot of love for him on this show. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and everything that's going on. Uh, I mean, I, I and so I have to open up. Uh, and, you know, Danny, in particular, you know, being a woman, you know, mm. I'm, I imagine that is uh, extra. Like it, it's almost like a, a, a wider bullseye. And, 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 and please forgive me if you don't want to like kind of get into this too much. But in terms of the negativity and like what is unleashed with this the current age, I imagine this has a, a decent amount to do with it. It is. Hmm. How do I phrase this? So I, I'm the marketing manager and I write all the updates. I'm, I'm the primary person people talk to on our campaign. I look at the comments every day. I'm the one telling them the good news and the bad news. And I'm also on streams and stuff. Like to them, I am Pandasaurus. They don't know mm-hmm. who Molly and Nathan are. <laughs> they don't know Ooh, who Brian Molly is. Nathan. I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I'm doing everything that makes them happy or makes them angry. Um regardless of what they're doing to make me frustrated or sad or whatever. So I don't know if I can uh, apply everything to me being a woman, but there are certain times when backers are downright harassing me, Mm. spamming content uh, comments, messaging me, messaging Panda on Kickstarter and Facebook and Twitter, which, Hey, spoiler alert. I read those (laughs) too. Telling me I should be fired or that I'm rude and snippy when they've been doing this to me for weeks. I'm like, yes, I'm sorry. I've lost my patience with you. Mm. <laughs> um, when I do live streams, sometimes um, the viewers will sometimes be the one harassing me. It's not, it's not the co-host, not the guests, but no. there'll be comments uh, like for Dino World. I hosted live streams. I, I was in your seat, Jason. I had two, two guests with me who were men um and because we were sharing the live stream link with all of our 10,000 backers uh it, we had chat going right and uh i was talking teaching the game reading chat at the same time as i was talking to my guests and i see this person come in and greet the two male guests and then say mm. oh and danny va 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 voom and like you come into my house mm-hmm. <laughs> and say this, but I couldn't miss a beat because I was hosting and, you know, it took me by surprise. Didn't quite know how to respond. Didn't want to address it because I didn't want to reinforce that behavior. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that answered your question really. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, you've had a couple of, of tweet threads, like following up about the, the, mm-hmm. the way you're treated, you know, and I just wanted to give you a form to, to visualize that because I think that on the consumer end, you know, here I am, you know, uh, I, I'm mad about my game for whatever reason. I think that the creator is falling down or I think that I'm late and, I, you know, whatever's happening. And like, I'm going to type, I'm going to type something. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that, you know, we get into our thing. And like, I think that I want to be able to help people understand that, like, okay, the people you're complaining to are getting, like, you are not the only one that is complaining. <laughs> and there's all sorts of other things that are going on there. So I want to visualize that. For yeah, people, well, and I want to visualize not just not just that people complain, but there's the dynamics involved in terms of you know power and you know gender right. and visibility and all this kind of stuff. Like me, community marketing social manager, I'm not making the decisions that are causing you to be upset. It's it's the definition of don't shoot the messenger. 
Um, I'm also unhappy with the shipping delays or the increased costs, whatever it may be. But you have a right to know, in my opinion. I'm trying to make things better so you at least understand what is happening. Um, if I don't have answers, you don't have answers. And so let's, let's have a healthy, calm conversation. We'll make it everything better. <laughs> mm-hmm. Go ahead, you got something to jump in there? I was just going to say that, you know, um, I've been on a lot of streams and no one's ever made any comments about my appearance, right? So I think that's, there's a stark difference between, uh, you know, male, female, when we're dealing with some uh, some people in, in the market. And that's, that's unfortunate, you know? Um, and and I, I appreciate you visual, visualizing and giving uh, everyone a chance to really like, let's call it out because the, the people who really need to step up is going to be, because like I said, Danny can't address that at that moment because she's doing her job. There needs to be people in the comment sections like, Hey dude, mm-hmm. that's, that's uncalled for. Right. Get out of here with that stuff. Right. We have to become ambassadors in our communities and shout down that bad behavior. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, we, we got off on this tangent because Kickstarter doesn't allow creators to do that. Mm. It's true. And, and, and I have seen a lot of our uh, fans, they will rally around us when somebody's being a jerk, you know, mm-hmm. um, it doesn't always happen, but you know, uh, and that's also because the system's kind of 1997 with the whole scrolling and pushing down the page. <laughs> Uh, where stuff doesn't really stack and, and right. have any sort of relevance. There's no up or down arrow. There's no, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a, of its own problem. Um, and I mean, there's, there's companies that, that have, they do things to, to work around that. So if, there's some, if people are posting bad comments, they'll post a, Hey, tell us what your favorite color is in the game. Just so that the, the feed starts getting comments and pushes the stuff down. Like, right. It's a mess, but like, it is nice when ambassadors do come to our mm-hmm. aid for us and, and, and rally around and shout down that bad behavior. Oh yeah. my gosh. I can't stress that enough. Literally having one person say the things you want to say inside your heart. <laughs> <laughs> the white, the white knight. Yeah, but the <laughs> Go good <on> kind. <laughs> oh, I have typed out so many responses for therapy, therapeutic reasons, and then go, Delete. Delete. <laughs> Delete. I hit enter. You know. Well, mm-hmm. Jason, you've mentioned seeing some of my my Twitter threads, and then on Twitter, my venting about frustrations around my job always very vague. Sure. <laughs> um, Absolutely. I'll say, "Oh, Kickstarter." Ah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I won't call out specific people or quote no. them. Whatever. No, that's it's no. inappropriate. Um, it's not about the individual person. It's about just you know making people aware of dynamics you know and the reason yes. we're talking about this is to visualize like i mean we especially if you're just like like a just a game i just want to play games type person right and there's this like res, there's this mentality it's like okay just, if it's not about games on the table i want to hear about it and it takes a lot to get games to the table it takes a lot to you know um make this magic happen so to speak and i'm sorry <laughs> You know, we have to visualize this stuff for as many people as possible. You, you had a reaction when I said like the just the it's just the game, but let's let's just play games crowd, Danny. <laughs> oh, did I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to play poker. <laughs> let's play some poker. <laughs> I'll take all Danny's money. <laughs> oh, th- yeah. No, I'm awful at line. <laughs> but I reacted because. So games are a passion project for so many of us. Like our teams are small. Pandasaurus is only eight people now. And until last month, we were six people, right? Mm -hmm. So there are very few people pouring their hearts and souls uh, and time into creating these things that we all love um, for very little margin, right? We we don't make millions of dollars. (laughs) Um, And so when people love it, that fuels us and keeps us going. For those who don't, it makes it a little harder for us but because we are people putting our beings as people into the games of course it's political of course there's going to be things other than games that happen Mm -hmm. yeah it it doesn't matter what hobby you pick right like there's Mm -hmm. there is no i'm just here to play games or i'm just here to watch movies or i'm just here to read books like and Jason, you've talked about this, right? Mm-hmm. In, in lots of That's stuff. why I kind of get hooked up on it. <laughs> there, there, there is no separation of right. these things. 
And so when people say that that's what they want, that is actually them taking a stance, right? Mm -hmm. It's saying, I choose apathy or I choose status quo. Yes. And, um, you know, I, I say, I say, boo you. No. Okay. Well, yeah. We're, <laughs> I got plenty to say about that, but yeah, I mean, so, okay. Let me get it back to Kickstarter. I have two more aspects to it. So you mentioned before about uh, people exploring alternatives to Kickstarter. I think the moderation thing really pushed a lot of people, you know, in terms of the direction of game found or whatever else, like, you know, more, more direct sales or whatever they're, they're trying. Um, and you alluded to like the difficulty of that in terms of like those audiences don't transfer. It's like when I, you know, Kickstarter um, communities do gather around Kickstarter. There are people who visit kickstarter.com on a daily basis. And they, say, they look at, you know, projects we love and all this kind of stuff. Uh, talk a little bit more about that. Talk a little bit more about the Kickstarter community and what you would be losing. I'll go, I'll go to James first and then we'll go to Danny. I, th um, I think the biggest thing that? for me is, is, is um, the notification system. Um, mm -hmm. You know, none of the other systems have come close to what Kickstarter does with the notification. So I, you know, over the years I've followed people, people have followed me. And when Tuesdays come, my inbox is lit, is lit with <laughs> this person back this and this person. And I discover so many projects uh, especially when people that I follow get out of board games, right. And they're backing things outside of board games. Like, well, that's really cool looking. Let me go look at that. What is mm. that? You know? Um, and the other systems just, they don't replicate that at all. And there's like, there's been games that have launched on game found that I've seen like a Facebook ad for in my feed that I'm like 500,000 funded or, you know, and I'm like, I didn't even know that was, mm -hmm. I didn't know it was out. So you know, there's a there's a big hump that the other systems have to overcome to even get on. Like currently, they're not even in this on the same field. They're not even okay. it's not even close. Yeah, I think that's so important. The because of the momentum that campaigns have to build to be considered successful, um, at least in backers' eyes, right? They want to see stretch goal after stretch goal being smashed and more things being added. And you can only do that if they're if the campaign is being funded at a certain rate. Um, so having a good, good, good first first day, first hours even mm -hmm. is vital. So having Kickstarter have this network of people subscribe to the creators, subscribe to their friends on the discover page. It's so helpful. And without it, you're taking, it's risky. Like James said earlier, you don't know what to expect without this thing that we yeah. understand how it works we know we we've got this branching audience mm -hmm. so you're kind of wading into dark waters i've definitely yeah. seen people specifically call me out in the board game spotlight they're like james you gotta stop backing stuff you're costing me money <laughs> you know, because they follow me and they see the things that i back and mm -hmm. um so anyway it's that that for me there are lots of benefits and features that we want and game found is trying to do or 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 uh, any of the other platforms that are out there. Um, what I'll happened to Indiegogo? Is that still a thing? It is. I've it seen is. some indie RPG creators moving towards there recently to get away from Kickstarter and mm -hmm. for myriad reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, okay, so um, what would be the top reasons? Would it be, so we got over the moderation spaces and we haven't talked about the blockchain thing. That's where we're going to end. Is there any other uh, big reasons to leave Kickstarter? Are those like the two kind of big ones that are hot right now? Yeah, I would say those are probably the two big ones. I mean, like I said, we, we, the stagnation mm -hmm. of the platform mm -hmm. and how it hasn't changed in five years with all the creators screaming from the top of their lungs. These are features that we want. These are features that we want. Okay. Even, yeah. even the consumers saying these are features that we want and things are just ignored, right? Mm -hmm. Just totally ignored. And then like, well, we changed our logo. And like, <laughs> it just is right. very frustrating. But it's never been enough to make you want to leave the platform because that's where the community is to mm -hmm. buy these type of games. Um, but to your point, it's it, the, the blockchain situation mixed with uh, these other things that we've already talked about, I think, are, mm -hmm. are starting to create a storm where people are like, maybe it is time to start testing. I think we have seen some companies move over specifically to GameFound to really start testing campaigns and see what, how they'll do. I mean, it's yeah. a really good point about the responsiveness uh, in terms of, you know, like people want to have a say, 
You know, like we don't want to be drones. We don't want to just kind of be fed stuff. Like the prop, the, the promise of Kickstarter of the promise of Kickstarter was like, you know, communities have a voice and you know, the publishers are gonna have a voice, you guys can have a voice together and you like make stuff. And sometimes that happens, you know, and but then like you have this third party that keeps on doing just nonsense to, that gets in the way of that voice or not doing nonsense <laughs> in the case of moderation, like not do I don't care about this stuff. Uh, and to not to not have like what's the point of using a voice if it's not gonna be heard? You know, so then I think it's such a great point, James. I, I, I did I um, interrupt you, Danny? I, I, I apologize for that. No, 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 it was fine. I was going to add one positive thing mm-hmm. that that I'm impressed by GameFound that that GameFound does that I'm impressed by, and that is their kind of table of contents feature with yes. hyperlinks. So if you're scrolling along the side, you can quick jump to stretch goals or mm-hmm. add-ons or whatever part of the page, which is so. It's a no brainer to me because campaigns have so much information that we're trying to feed the backer. Uh, so why not make it easy for them to find what they need to know? What, you don't <laughs> want the digital papyrus where you unroll? <laughs> That's what Just... they all are. <laughs> Even for my own campaigns, I have to scroll and scroll and mm-hmm. scroll to our videos or to update the, the stretch goal image. <laughs> it right. takes years mm-hmm. of my life. <laughs> So that, I don't want to take too long. I, w- I do want to hit the blockchain thing. So mm-hmm. that is a, it, it blew up, what? Like, I don't know, three, four months ago, or ish, right? End of last year. Uh, so if folks don't know, I did an episode on blockchain and NFTs with, with uh, Jeff Engelstein. Please go ahead and check that out. Uh, we focus on NFTs in particular, but I think it's the blockchain thing that really hurt the Kickstarter thing. So like, you know, um, short story, uh, blockchain is like this new frangle technology way of storing information. Uh, it's It's, it's, you know, it has all the bells and whistles of something that like, you know, a tech person like, oh, this is going to make our lives better, more transparency, you know, less, de- you know, more decentralized way of storing information. Right. You know, we're talking like, you know, the, the piping of the Internet. We're going to do it in a whole new way. Uh, so then there are concerns, <laughs> particularly around the environment. Like it, it is like the blo- uh, uh, running a blockchain is very environmentally um, intensive. And. So once Kickstarter kind of announced, oh, we're headed over to the blockchain for you, people, this is going to benefit you, the creator and you, the people. So there was this like, A, that kind of like, um, it just felt very like you're selling me something in that, you know, a very shystery type way. Because it's not for me. This is for Kickstarter. Uh, And just the environment stuff. So like there is a lot of pressure in certain segments of the community that are pushing creators to you know, these other, to exploit these other platforms. So like there's the internal battle of creators, you know, wondering, you know, what should I do? This is making them comfortable. But then there's also that external pressure from certain segments of the board gaming community. So uh, Danny, go ahead and uh, maybe talk through a little bit of that, what's happening now with that. Well, we've certainly had multiple behind the scenes conversations about, do we stay? Do we go? Do we give up all the benefits we just talked about to explore the unknown? Uh, and, and stand by our principles at a, as a company and as as our personal selves. Well, does Kickstarter violate those principles, in your opinion? Mm-hmm. We'll mm-hmm. see. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, still, still <laughs> um, kind of thinking. Obviously, we didn't make the the switch for Skate Summer, and that's because it hasn't the blockchain hasn't been implemented yet. Okay. Um, they also talked about ways of offsetting the environmental costs. Now, in my opinion, it's better not to have cost the environment anything to begin with, since Mm -hmm. it'll take years for the trees they plant or whatever the plan is to grow. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, But we still don't understand the benefit to us as creators, and we don't understand the benefit that it's giving to backers. So uh, there's still a lot that is to be decided that Kickstarter has not yet commented on. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, James. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I think some a, a distinction to make too, and, and Jeff may have went into this in, in your previous episode, but like NFTs, crypto, blockchain, uh, they those are kind of different things within <laughs> one uh, sphere, right? Um, but it's kind of, right now, it's kind of discussed as one entity, right? right. One thing. Um, with all that said, um, it's exactly what Danny said. Like Kickstarter... It feels like they put that article out to test the temperature in the room. Mm-hmm. 
um, because they didn't really commit to anything. They didn't say by X date, this is being implemented. And like Danny said, they didn't tell us exactly what it was going to do. What are these benefits? How is this going to benefit us? What do we get that's going to make our lives easier as creators? If you're in freedom, you get a freedom. freedom. <laughs> Whatever that is. Right? Uh, and if, for the consumer, because I back a lot of board games on Kickstarter. What is my benefit as a consumer? How am I more safe or how am I getting better deals or whatever that is? They haven't explained any of that. Right. So uh, there's there's those things. And it's to Danny's point right now, it's still unknown if we move to a different platform. So it doesn't make sense for us to move yet. But I think once they solidify their position, mm -hmm. that's when I think the, the line will be drawn in the sand for, for folks. Um, but, you know, I, I'm confused because <laughs> when they, when they took the temperature of the room, that should have been it. Mm. Because there that, wasn't any positivity around that announcement, right? Like there wasn't anybody going, I really can't wait to see what this is going to do for our crowdfunding platform. It was all a big mm -hmm. boo, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm curious why, because then they did, they did, if I'm not mistaken, uh, my head's been down in a lot of things, but like, I do believe they came out with a second thing talking about a white paper that they were going to be releasing or something. So it was like, well, they, they saw the temperature room was bad mm -hmm. and they're still forging forward. And the only thing I can think of on that end is that they've got some venture capitalists in their ear saying, you know, yeah, you're going to lose a certain percentage of people, but like you're going to make substantially more money by going right. to the blockchain. So hell or high water, this is what you need to do to be successful and, and to just to make more money. If you mm -hmm. want to make more money, you got to get on the blockchain. That's what everything's going to, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know what the hell they're doing, honestly. <laughs> NFT stretch goals. That's what we're going to get. <laughs> that's the only reason for it. Uh, I the, mean, the problem though is if, if, if creators don't want to put that into their campaigns and they don't want to build that into their whatever product they're offering, because we're not talking about just board games, right? There's 14 different lanes on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm just confused. Honestly, the whole okay. thing is confusing. Not, not because I don't understand. I've went and dug into NFT and crypto. So I got a good basis of knowledge mm -hmm. there. I don't understand what they're doing as a company yeah. Kickstarter, trying to force this into something that no one's asking for. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing. If they can do this, but not give us moderation tools. Right. Where are your priorities? <laughs> Right. So just then, sip your tea, mm -hmm. sip your tea, Danny. Just sip your tea. <laughs> I mean, you're taking the reasonable stance, right? And this reasonable stance is like wait and see. Nothing's been actually changed yet, and maybe they're feeling on all kind of stuff. Uh, are you having difficulty dealing with that segment of the community that wants you to just like respond right now? Because that has happened. Like, I mean, there are some creators that are like, oh man, you know, I mean, I, I was thinking about it, but then I got all this blowback. You know, and I, I just kind of like to had to make a quick decision because I didn't want to deal with blowback. Uh, so, I mean, is that an issue or is that like kind of a or did it did it play a little bit differently? I'll ask that. Um, so we we launched our campaign mid mid January. So fairly recently um, and after the Kickstarter announcement, of course, right. we were prepared for initial feedback or um, blowback. Mm -hmm. uh, people challenging us on why we're going to Kickstarter. However, and, and we all agreed internally on a statement, what we would say, which was the truth. Panda was formed on Kickstarter 10 years ago mm -hmm. uh, with Tammany Hall. It was the very first campaign. Uh, and I can't stand done, that game. That game is so mean. It's so mean. <laughs> I hate that it's game so, so historically much. Accurate. <laughs> <laughs> um, whatever, we had a statement. But actually, no one was cruel or aggressive in, in inquiring. What I've seen mostly now is people commenting in general about mm -hmm. Kickstarter and they're delving into blockchain, but not attacking creators personally or di mm -hmm. directly, which I appreciate. All right. I mean, that's a, uh, it sounds like that's a lot of like uh, what social media does. Like you feel like there's this heat, but then you actually get into it and it's like, oh, that wasn't as bad as I Maybe that was just like a little bit of an initial thing. And you like, if you kind of stick with it, then, you know, stick with your principles and kind of take a wait and, wait and see mode, then it sounds like it, it, it would work out. Mm, 
what I saw Restoration do, I was pretty impressed by. They're very mm-hmm. proactive with um, the Thunder Road. Thunder Road Vendetta. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, where before their campaign even launched, they addressed the Kickstarter's plan. Um, and they offered their fans an option. If they didn't want to um, support Kickstarter and pledge their money through that, they could do it through the pledge manager mm-hmm. or they could order on the website and give their money elsewhere while still supporting restoration, but not, you know, if you go that route, you're not helping to unlock stretch goals. Right. But I thought it was a compromise, but again, this decision by Kickstarter is affecting creators negatively. Right. There's nothing positive coming out of it. It's either neutral or negative. It's not like a, a boon yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. I think we've pretty much covered, I mean, there's a lot to, to say, but I think we've pretty covered the basics for now for Kickstarter. Uh, are, are any other last words, James, about uh, the topic? No, yeah, it's it's it definitely is wait and see. I think, and and it's it's hard uh, because, like Danny said, it puts creators in a bad position of making a choice to go to what feels like a, a platform that could be more risky to launch your campaigns on. If you feel strongly enough about, like, I can't be a part of that system. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, I, you know, I'm still holding out hope that that um, that plays out differently. That they listen <laughs> to their communities because I, I think it's, it's, I think it's a pretty strong vote in the no category of blockchain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My vote oh. is no, I, my vote is full steam ahead. Like no, seeing what like Ubisoft is doing and like what some of the big video game makers, like they've got like, cause they're bigger and they get more of this, like they, they're fully ahead blockchain and NFTs, and like, you know, there's been struggles, but I just think that, like you said before, the venture capitalists, and there's a lot of like voices behind the scenes pushing this and seeing a lot of value. So it would have to be a massive meltdown in order for us to not take some of this road. So that's my, I've been just as a layman. Uh, I know that's depressing, but, <laughs> but we need to know about this stuff. And that's why we do industry nuts and bolts. I mean, and, you know, at the end of the day, I want to invite smart people on to really share their expertise on the industry. And for two episodes, uh, I, I have been blessed uh, to be joined by uh, James and Danny, uh, thank you so much. We did the prep. We did the promo last time, the big promo for what's coming up. But like, so like, uh, just in case you haven't, you didn't hear the last episode, uh, James, I'll start with you. Go ahead and just really quickly, what's coming up for uh, Druid City? Uh, Title Blades 2 uh, and Title Blades the RPG. So if you like RPGs or if you like dungeon crawls, you like the Title Blades world, uh, this is going to be the crescendo. So come, come check it out. Very nice. Danny? Uh, we've got late pledges open for Skate Summer, which is basically Tony Hawk video games into a board game. And we've got Skull Canyon, a skiing game that's Ticket to Ride Meets Parks. Danny Lowe, James Hudson, please don't be strangers. Thank you so much for coming to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having us. If you can change your mind, you can change the world, people. So until next time, hey, everybody.